Hi guys, I'm going to show you how to create an Angular 1.x application using TypeScript. I'm going to show you some tools and IDE etc that I use along the way. So I'm going to create a new project. I'm using WebStorm from IntelliJ on Title 7. I'm going to create it in this window because I have a few of them opened. Okay, so an empty project. So in order to get started, now I have Node.js already installed as an executable on my system, okay? I've already done an npm install minus g bower so bower brings me down the different libraries uh, angular for example is one of the libraries we want to bring down so i have that installed globally i don't need to install it on every single project i'm running in my system okay you can install it without the g and it'll be local to your, your current project um so let's initialize node first of all so do an npm in it i'm going to actually accept all the defaults for everything um bower i'm going to initialize bower Again, going to accept all the defaults for everything here as well. Looking good, yes. Now I'm also going to, as I said, use TypeScript. Now Angular 1 wasn't written in TypeScript, but we have TypeScript definitions for Angular 1, okay? Now they're all up in a GitHub website called, or GitHub um, repository called Definitely Typed. But there's a tool we can use for doing bringing all this down for us and taking the administration out of it. So we're going to do a TS or npm install TSD. Okay, so TypeScript definitions. Now this time we're going to go save and we're going to make it a dev. So we're saving a development dependency. Okay, so let's do this. It's going to bring it down. I may hit pause if it takes a few seconds. Okay, and now it's down. So let's see what we have in our project. So we have our bar JSON. That's basically for the bar components. We haven't brought any down. And we have our package JSON. And the only dev dependency we have down at the moment is TypeScript definitions. Okay. So now let's tell Bower to bring down something. So Bower install Angular. So it's going to bring down the Angular libraries. Okay, and we're going to save that. So again, I may press pause if it takes too long. Let's see. Okay, it's there. So now on our borrow.json you can see we have Angular. Okay, you can see we have a borrow components. The Angular library has been brought down has been brought down for us. It's pretty good. So the other thing is again we're using TypeScript, so we're going to bring down this definitely typed definitions for um for Angular. So TSD install TSD in it, first of all. This initialize TSD JSON file for us, okay? Uh, TSD install Angular. And again, we're going to save it. So now what we're going to have here when this finishes is a new folder called Typings. Inside in the Typings, we got Angular. Angular has a dependency on jQuery. Can have a dependency on jQuery, but at least when we're statically typing, it needs that dependency so that's why it's brought down jQuery and we have a file called tsdd dot tsd definitions uh, dot ts now this basically includes all the different libraries we're getting definitely type definitions for so we can actually include this file in our other TypeScript files and it automatically brings in these definitions for us okay um, so we don't need typings we don't need node modules we don't need Bower if we were saving stuff into our source um, source control we just need these three files and then we can do an install on each of these and it'll install all the packages we've already defined okay so now let's get started with the actual angular application so start off with an index.html and we're going to have an app called uh, ng app called my app we're going to have a controller uh, ng controller my my controller okay and I'm going to use the as syntax and we're just going to basically output one variable vm dot name okay so that's pretty much the HTML done now let's create the, the angular code so create a new folder called app under our app, we usually create an app uh, JS. We're creating an app TS in our case. And in order to use Angular TypeScript definitions, we can actually bring this file in here. So let's copy. Let's copy one of these. Okay. 
and we're enabling the compiler so webstorm has a compiler you can use grunt or gulp or whatever your your preferred client build system is so we're going to bring in apts sorry we're going to bring in typings tsd okay so now we're going to create a module we're not really going to cover typescript itself and we're going to create a controller my controller I believe I call it and this controller is going to do two things it's going to log a message and it is going to uh, keep a variable called name okay so we're going to look for the constructor and for logging a message we're going to use the um, angular logger okay so we're going to go for dollar log we're actually going to say what the type of this dollar log is so we can get actually better IntelliSense etc so we're going to say the log is angular dot i log service okay and the name okay we'll, we'll uh, make the name a private member okay so you're going to inject in the log service now in order to inject in the log service we'll do it the typescript way oops all fingers okay so this is basically injecting the log which matches this so in so when the old var uh, my angular dot module I think that's what I called it. So the old way of doing it would have been something like this. We would have said my app dot controller equals um, the name of the controller is my controller, and we would have actually created the array here, passing the name of our function in JavaScript sense uh, as the last parameter. But we're not doing that. We're just putting in the name of the controller, and we're using this syntax for the dependency injection. Okay, now in order to use the log um, and make it part of the member variables of this class, we're going to put private. So now that log can be used in other functions, for example, do something. We can say this dot dollar log dot info doing something, okay. Okay, um, we also said we'd have a member variable called um, name. So private string, and we can initialize it here. We can say this dot name equals Brian. Okay, looks good. So controller, controller, looks good. What am I missing? Let's let's suck it and see. Okay, back to the HTML. We need to include the scripts, obviously. So script source equals power components. We're going to need to bring in Angular. Angular. And we're going to need to bring in our app. I wish we had the Visual Studio approach here where we could just drag them in, but we don't. Okay. App, app t, app js. Okay. And the controller we're already doing inline in the app. Okay. Looks good. Let's run this and see what it looks like. Open in browser Chrome. Okay, need to bring it over here, and you can see that we have an extra curly. Which it, oh, control Z, extra curly. So that's kind of how to get started. Really, really fresh. Um, I did say I did add a method. So let's create something here. We'll create a. a well, I don't know. Div uh, ng click equals vm dot do something, isn't it? Do something, okay. Uh, click me, okay. Let's have a look at what that looks like. Come back here, refresh, and we have a click me. It was just bring up the debugger. Let's click, and you can see that I've now logged the message. So that's kind of it. Um, TypeScript is really, really cool. Um, definitely worth learning. 
I thought it was a bit too much ceremony for what I was so used to, but now that I've got into it over the last few months, I find it hard to, to kind of just go back to playing JavaScript and try to invert everything in my head. Rather, the compiler does that for me. Um, what are the problems I've encountered with TypeScript? Um, directives aren't so nice to deal with um, because they need factory functions etc so for directives I've reverted to using just plain old functions in TypeScript um, but other than that it's pretty good um, again I said I don't want to cover TypeScript itself but I suppose the biggest advantage is that we're so used to writing var that equals this and using closure to get access to the this variable to reference the current um, scope or function that we're in TypeScript does this for us. So, for example, if we had a, um, I don't know, some some uh, function. <sighs> I don't know what's the quickest way of picking one. Let's say um, window. Set timeout uh, 333 milliseconds, and then we wanted to do something when the timeout happens. We can actually create an anonymous function. Okay. So, the beauty of this is that TypeScript automatically wraps the this for us, okay? Because the this, depending on the method invocation pattern, as you know in JavaScript, can change, okay? Now, how does it do it? In fact, it basically does what you're so used to doing yourself manually. So let's just split the screen, split vert again. I'm going to show you the, I'm not clicking too much, I'm going to show you the type, the, the JavaScript version of the TypeScript, okay? So you can see what it's actually done is a var underscore this, and then it's using it in the set timeout. So okay, pretty cool. Recommend TypeScript. Uh, recommend um, WebStorm, or if you're kind of using Java back in, use IntelliJ. Uh, Visual Studio is okay as well. And um, that's it. Hope it gets someone kind of up and running a bit quickly. Thank you.